I put more in the fuel tank than I was able to put in my pocket. Um, I've been out since I passed my CEO test. I've been out for about seven weeks, but I have not been out training. So let's talk about this right quick. Prime has been in the news lately. Prime Inc. out of Springfield, Missouri. This week or this past week, they installed or incorporated new AI technology in the form of front-facing and driver-facing cameras. There has been a lot of talk, a lot of opinions, and the Kool-Aid drinkers over there has been trying to spin this as a positive for the company there has been leaked uh, safety meeting videos uh, of them talking about the ai technology that they're coming into play one of which they talked about that was it fact or fiction that the uh, that the safety department or the t or the it department can sneak look at the drivers while they're driving in real time Apparently, there was some information on social media over the last couple of weeks about cameras. All right. So, fact or fiction? All right. Uh, Prime is going to start uh, recording the inside of drivers' cabs with video available to see through um, from fleet managers, IT, safety department, etc. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Fiction, there you go, fiction. Good job, good job, Jessica. That is fiction, you know, we are- Wrong, that's not fiction, that's fact. That's a fact. That is a fact. It may have been fiction back then because the company would get a ding from a driver and that signal was sent to a third party. A third party will look at it and say, oh, but the driver was just cut off or something like that. That the, the company didn't need to know that. But no, now the company themselves that's partnered with the technology has opportunities to look at you while you're driving in real time. They can tell whether you getting that good that good smoke off. Uh, they they can tell whether you're not paying attention because this new AI technology with the cameras it it can it can tell if you're distracted or not it can tell if you're looking down for far too long it could tell if you're moving around changing the channel or whatever it could tell that if you're in a pipe zone it would tell all of that and relay all that information to your safety department which whom can see in real time in order for the camera to get the information needed, it has to be recording at all times. It don't just, okay, you get in an event and it records six seconds before and eight seconds afterwards. That's how it is because it is recording. It has to go back in order to capture what happened six seconds before it is recording make it make sense it's recording but that's here nor there that's their new technology we're here talking about two young ladies the videos were sent to me and i got a chance to watch both of them one young lady is talking about the least side of prime and another young lady is talking about her it's her overall experience with the company the second young lady i did reach out to and to let you know that this particular situation with her happened some years ago somebody sent me the video via of another youtuber that was reacting to her video and that particular youtuber happens to work for prime so i guess what she called herself doing was just going over critiquing everything that this young lady has said versus what she feels about the company so with that said i do appreciate you guys listening thank you very much uh, make sure you guys leave your thoughts in the comments below and we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the segment you guys take it easy and i'll come back at you with another video peace no more wasting time let's get it hold on the purpose of this video today is prime inc's lease program my two cents right and this is really just 
my personal opinion, okay? I put more in the fuel tank that I was able to put in my pocket. Um, after the fees and after the truck payment and after this little bit, that little bit being deducted, by the time I actually was able to bring anything in, it was not anything like what it looked like. There was settlements, right? In those settlements, right? The settlement might say $5,000, but I'm bringing in maybe 900. <laughs> 900 <laughs> and i think that is what a lot of people are doing on youtube they are posting their and y'all prime y'all please don't come for me are posting their settlements and it is only the gross amount that is being posted now when you think gross you think before the net because that's what it is the gross is what your truck made, but the net is what your truck is actually bringing home. And there is a difference. There is a difference. I ended up finding out really quickly that Prime just was not for me, especially in the time and in the season that I was there. I just was there at the wrong time. I should have took my time and went when I know I was supposed to go, which was after my year was up at CFI. Also, when you are accepting loads, right? Your fleet manager is not gonna tell you if the load is good or if the load is bad, right? So this is something coming in from other companies that I believe you should watch for. If you are going to Prime Inc and you want to join the lease program, I believe that it is a program for people who are coming out of Prime's training. Because once you've been on the truck with another Prime Inc driver, they're able to lead you and guide you and tell you right from wrong. When you are coming from other companies, you are out there by yourself. Your fleet manager is not going to tell you anything. I don't really remember who it was, but somebody was saying that if you decline too many loads, then that was means for termination. I think Rob Lowe may have gotten rid of a lot of drivers right before I got there. And I think the reason why he did it was because people was declining loads. So I went in with the mindset of not declining loads because I wanted to keep my job. And I took every load that came through, right? I was on my way out. Why? I'm just not making the money that I thought I would make. Pretty much came here on a wing and a prayer. And I think that my timing was off and, and yada, 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 right? So, and I did just to see what that would have been like right? And she told me not to take the load. I had already accepted the load because the load was taking me back to Springfield. It was taking me back to Springfield so I could turn my truck in. I didn't tell her that though. I just needed to know what her opinion was and what she thought. She told me exactly what she thought. She said that I should not take the load and it was because the miles and the money just didn't make sense. I really didn't know how to maneuver that just yet. You know, it was my first lease and I probably should have went in as a company driver first. I think if I had done that, I would have had time to learn the company and understand what it was all about. So my advice to you going into Prime Inc, if you are going in with no license and you want to train there and you want to lease your truck after you train, do that. It seems to me that everybody who does it that way win. If you are like me, coming in with your CDL, and you seeing all the videos, and you drink the juice, okay? And you want to go, and you want to get your truck, and you want to sign the paperwork, and you want to ride off into the sunset. Believe me, you're going to have to have some leasing experience. You're going to have to have somebody from Prime maybe on the inside to talk to you. Somebody that can kind of share the insights with you about the do's and the don'ts, what loads to take, what loads maybe not to take. Your fleet manager is not going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. You're going to have to know. And that was just a mistake that I made. I did not know. So outside of the fuel, the prices, the money going straight into the fuel tank, all of the fees that was calculated into that, you know, you have really got to have a good relationship with your DM or your fleet manager. I didn't. So that was another problem. Make sure that you do. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's my truth about Prime Inc. And that's it. Okay, and after all that, I still may be leaving Prime. Since I passed my CEO test, I've been out for about 
seven weeks, but I have not been out training. Out of the seven weeks since I've graduated and got my CDL, I've only been training out on the road for four days. Uh, I've had three trainers assigned to me. Three trainers assigned to me. During this process that I'm going through with having trainer issues, yes, I've had three trainers. I've only been out on the road for four days. And I want to say this first, I really, 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 really wanted to work for Prime. I actually still do want to work for Prime, but I think with all that's going on, it's not going to be a good fit for me personally. And let me tell you what happened. I get out of training, I go home for home time, and I have graduated, I've gotten my CDL. If you don't have a trainer while you're at Prime, you go home and they sign your trainer, and then you and your trainer correlate, meet up, y'all go out on the road, awesome sauce. I'm at home for about a week, they're trying to find me a trainer. I actually met up with someone we were going to train together, but they told us at the last minute, a few days before he's coming to pick me up, he's like literally in my city, that no, that's not how things work and we cannot train together. Okay, so we're back to square one. They start trying to find me a trainer. So about a, a few days, a fleet manager contacted me and said, hey, we got somebody for you and we're, we're gonna have him reach out to you. Okay, so later that day, the guy reset my first trainer. We correlate some things and we figure out when he's gonna come in and pick, pick me up. So we correlated that it'd be best for me to just drive up to Springfield and meet him in Springfield. So that's what we do. I drive up to Springfield, he and I meet in Springfield and we go out on the road. Now, this particular trainer, he is in the National Guard. So every month he has to take time off to do his training, which I was told of and informed from the beginning. And I said, cool, that's fine. I felt like I didn't care if it take a long time as long as I get a good trainer. So we go out, we out for about four days. So I was like, okay, cool. He brings me back to Kansas City. I get off his truck and he's got to do his training thing or whatever. So it's like the following week, I'm supposed to get back on the truck with him. So I'm like, okay, cool. So it's getting closer to the day that I know we're supposed to meet up to go back out on the road. And so I'm like, okay, like I'm checking in. I'm like, hey, what's up? When, what's our ETA? What, you know, what are the plans? So he's like, well, it'll be a couple of days. I'm coming back that way in a few days. I'm like, okay, cool. He calls me. He's like, he sounded kind of frustrated. He was like, well, they told me that there was no point in me picking you up for just a few days if I was going to bring you back bring you back and then I was gonna be out for three weeks which when me and him first got together and, and agreed to train he said he wasn't sure if he was gonna be out for three weeks or not or it was just gonna be two weeks so he said well they told me that, that I could pick you up for just a few days or just for a week and then bring you back for three weeks I thought you said you was okay with with me being out for a couple weeks I was like yeah but because if 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 I don't get assigned somebody else I don't get paid I don't get paid and so I didn't really understand it at the time, yay or nay, or whether or not I was gonna be training with him or not. I think the whole thing was is that if she intends on continuing to get paid, well, we gotta reassign her to somebody else. So, okay, that happens. So I get assigned to someone else. And then, so this guy, fleet manager calls me and he's like, well, we got you this guy, he's really cool, or this and that, he gets me back. And he's like, he should be giving you a call soon. I'm like, okay, cool. Trainer number two calls me. He says, well, hey, he introduces himself. He talks about how he runs his truck. We just kind of, you know, a little pleasant treats to try to get no basics about one another, you know? And I'm like, okay, cool. He seems real cool. So he calls me on Monday and we talk and he's like, well, I will probably meet up and go out either this Friday or Saturday because they, they have to route me in your direction. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I understand, I get that. So now it's about Thursday afternoon-ish. I just kind of want to let him know that, yeah, I, I definitely want to be prepared for when, whatever he's got going on. I'm just checking in with him. So I text him on Thursday. I was like, hey, how's everything going? That's all my text said. And I didn't hear from him on Thursday. He might be driving. He might be trying to drive and sleep. So I'm not about to trip with him about him not responding back to me. So Friday comes. I don't hear nothing from him at all on Friday. I didn't hear nothing from him Thursday. I didn't hear nothing from him Friday at all. And then mind you, he said, he said on Friday that we supposed to be going out either Friday or Saturday. So Friday comes and go, I don't hear nothing from you. I'm like, okay, I'm concerned. So Saturday I text him and I say, I text him like in the morning, like nine something in the morning. I was like, hey, just checking in, make sure, checking in, make sure I'm still assigned to you, you know, unless just to make sure nothing has changed. And later that afternoon, he texts me back and he's like, I'm sorry for the late response, 
we we are still assigned to one another i'll contact you and let you know when i'm heading your way i, I may be headed your way tomorrow this is saturday so you somebody you might be heading my way sunday i'm like okay that kind of rubbed me the wrong way but whatever let's just do this sunday comes and it goes i don't hear nothing from him monday comes and i'm already very irritated I'm deciding if I even want to be bothered anymore. So no, I did not contact him on no Monday. Tuesday, first thing in the morning, the guy I was supposed to go, go out on training with, his fleet manager calls me. He's like, hey, such and such has had some issues come up. He's had like some, some health concerns that's come up and he thinks he's gonna end up being out, out more often than he planned. And so you guys may not be a good fit for training. Okay, okay. So fleet manager tells me that. So he is, you guys don't want to be able to work together. I'm like, okay. Hey, this one I'm like, I'm definitely about to, I'm exploring other options at this point. Definitely exploring other options because you gotta think about it. I've been sitting for weeks and I have not had training and it's not because I've been unavailable. Third trainer, a couple of days later, a fleet manager calls me. He, he introduces himself. He's like, hey, I'm gonna have this guy give you a call. 24 hours later, this trainer calls me and we have a conversation about things as far as him not really being available, not for the next couple of weeks, because he says that he'll be available again. He'll be able to take me out for one week at the most. His new bride, that's how he said, he, played, he put it, him and his new bride are gonna be going out on the road with each other for like a week. In my mind, I'm thinking, you probably gonna end up wanting to be out on the road with her. She's your wife and y'all just got married. Y'all probably gonna wanna be out on the road together over the summer. So I say all that to say, I I gotta keep it moving. I still do wanna work with Prom almost a full two months later. I currently have a little under 2,000 miles. And after almost two months, me graduating, and that's all I have. But at this point, I'm kinda like, it makes more sense to me, especially since I've almost waited a full two months. It's like, just go ahead and work company for someone. The run, the boat, the back of tequila, I mix it all up and I swear that I need none of them. My pocket is in the back of water, none of them. My mind is in the back of time.